This is Kai Silas from the National Sports Network. We're looking at the Popular Freedom Rugby Union. Semi-finals are done. Sacredicity 45 to 15 winners over Rocky Edge. Stanislav, huge upset over Lock Harbor South, 29 to 22. We're going to be looking at the two teams in the Tier 2 final, Sacredicity versus Stanislav, to see who's most likely to come out on top, especially with no injuries. This is going to be a great game. Let's go! Looking at Sacredicity first. When you look at their team, they don't look like a Tier 2 team. They look like a Tier 1 team, and there's a lot of reason for that. They are still chock full of players who played on the 2041 Championship, Grand Championship. Okay, and so when you're looking at Garisto, when you're looking at Chartree, Ajax, Flood, Namor, Nasbitt, Wilkinson, Buckland, Capo, they've all been at the championship. They are all great players, but most important at all is Cole. He was on the Lanita Legions when they won in 2039 and 2040, and he is a speed machine. Also, their bench is really strong with three players who have won grand championships in the past. And so they are going to be a force to contend with against a Stanislav side, which really doesn't have that much experience with grand championships. Let's look at Stanislav now, shall we? Stanislav fans might feel overwhelmed when they look at the Saints roster, but they have weapons of their own. Bourbon, he was traded by Sacronicity just prior to the 2041 season. Don't tell me he doesn't want revenge. Penn is definitely a better player at his position than Neymar is. You also have Audi, the superstar. He can kick it better than anybody on the field. Coupled with Melnam, they have a strong force at scrum half, fly half, which could be the difference. Also, when we look at their bench, Gelser, Ori, and Eckers are definitely a step above their counterparts on the Sacredicity bench. So even though Sacredicity has the likelihood of winning, Stanislav can still pull out a victory. Now, we're going to look at Tier 1. In the semifinals, Camelot, of course, beat Lanita 31-22. But, again, another upset. Lock Harbor North was able to get out a last-second dropkick to win 22-21 over Union. We're going to look at Camelot now. And Camelot, three times in the final, three times being the favorite. Will this be their year? They have no injuries, so no excuses this year. They do have, overall, a better lineup than Lock Harbor North. But still, that has proven to be not good enough in the 2045 and the 2044 seasons when they were favored and lost. It's going to come down, many feel, to how Chat plays, their superstar captain. Is he going to do enough? Because, realistically, they're running out of years to win this final championship. They do have the better bench, and if it comes down to injuries, if it comes down to bad weather, that may play a factor in who wins or who loses this coming grand champion. Next, we're gonna look at Lock Harbor North because they are four-time grand champions in a row, and they're gonna be a force to contend with. If you look at Lock Harbor North and you're looking at their lineup, there's a lot of players who you might not recognize because they spent a lot of this offseason doing deals. They got a boost from Athens just to shore up their lineup. They really want to win this fifth time around, and it shows. But again, their bench is really shoddy. Still, if it comes down to just their starters, they feel confident that they can win led by a number of players, including Soriano, their penalty kicker, place kicker, but most importantly, their captain, the best player in the league, Manley. This guy is the fastest player in the league, and if he gets the ball and nobody can corral him, he's gone. He here is gonna be their bench. They are already down one lock, 
for this final championship. And so they've had to resort to some reserves into their bench. And is that going to hurt their chance to win their fifth in a row? We're going to see this coming grand championship.